if you think about what we're talking about, there are four essential qualities that any system must have to be reliable and resilient. First, there must be clarity of the system's purpose. What is its end state? What are we trying to solve for? Second, its elements must be connected. In a way, we're saying that interfaces matter. Third, we must be able to know continually with confidence the status of the system and its critical components. And finally, the system must be able to adapt to conditions of change. Now, viewed against, viewed against those four characteristics, every well-functioning system looks strikingly similar, but not healthcare. In theory, everyone agrees on the system's purpose. There, there's a broad consensus forged in many respects by the examples of such institutions as the Cleveland Clinic, who does a great job that American healthcare must be patient-centric. Yes, the patient's needs must be the foremost consideration. Don't read that in the newspaper every day. Uh, but to be sure, they must be also value-focused, evidence-based, accountable, and sustainable. But the most important thing to get right is in any system is the initial design point. As Dr. Cortez pointed out in his talk last week, you have to optimize the system for something. You have to have a vision of what its end state will be. And therefore, you have to determine what it will ultimately deliver. There's also wide recognition that components of the American medicine and healthcare environment, testing capabilities, hospitals, medical schools, emergency room, pharmaceuticals, and in fact, we were watching uh, catheterization before we came over. It's amazing. It's amazing the breakthroughs that we have, the technological innovation. So that's not the problem. And I don't think anybody's going to say that we're not world class in a lot of what we do. What you guys do is not the problem. The problem is nothing is actually connected among all of its important elements. This is something so basic that we take it for granted in other areas for life, in life. Think about it. In banking systems. We just assume that when you transfer funds or make payments between institutions, it happens. Yeah. How many people really go through and go through their checkbook every month now to make sure it's balanced? You, you, you just, you know, just take it for granted. Airline systems, you change your reservation, or you, you get loyalty payments, or you have other kinds of programs, book a rental car. It's end to end, it just happens. Nobody thinks, well, God, that's a miracle that that occurred. It's incredible. <laughs> No, I can understand my bill from the hospital. I got paid by the insurance company. This is incredible. You know, it's a miracle. You know, I don't need a consultant. Oh my gosh. You know. Anyway, right? <laughs> Four parents and they're older. Oh, anyway, yeah, just get off the ball back, right? Um, but you know, but these why do they work? Because they have standards and interfaces that permit all the information to flow. And you know, I'm not talking about just the like, digits moving through wire or through the air. And, those wonderful commercials you see these days. What we're really talking about are processes and protocols that comprise what it takes to make a system work. And this is where healthcare in America fails as a well-functioning system. Its elements are terrific. When you look at it end to end, I think you would agree, it's not that level of flow of information and connectivity. 